Hi everyone, it's Sam, NFT Statistics, and this is your Proof Daily NFT Countdown. We got a great show today. A lot to talk about. This Thread Guy meets Jack Butcher situation, a huge OTC deal between Punks OTC and Beanie Max and CryptoPunks, and a lot of awesome art sales, a lot of art trading this weekend. Let's dive right in. Starting off with a quick market overview. Volumes were very low over the weekend. Saturday, one of the lowest volume days we've seen in years. Sunday, a bit better than that, but still low relative to where we have been. Vast majority of market share, about 70%, 77% was with Blur. Large cap index, basically flat. Had some strong performance from captains. A bit of weakness in the Board Ape Yacht Club ecosystem. Then looking at the mid caps, also basically flat, but had a huge performance, something like 54% up. From Opepin, which we will dive into a little bit later in the show. I mentioned Captains was up a lot. You can see here, nice little rally. I believe it was on Friday that one of the whales swept a whole lot of them. And yeah, you know, the project has been strong ever since, kind of held those gains. Opepin, you can see the move here from below 0.5 ETH to 0.75 ETH. All this attention coming as a result of the, the thread guy kind of situation. And we're going to dive into that. And then Pudgy Penguins. Basically flat, not a whole lot of movement over the weekend, down a touch, but a couple of interesting announcements from them. The first is that they are launching an OTC trading platform where people who own two Pudgies, OTC stands for over the counter, and it's basically two people who own Pudgies can trade with each other. On the marketplaces right now, it's NFT for ETH, but this is a way for people who own a bunch of them and want to trade with each other. They can do it on this platform. This is stuff we've seen from NFT Trader, from Pseudoswap, but there's always been a lot of scams kind of connected to those platforms or fake platforms like them. So here we have Pudgy Penguin stepping in and given royalties are basically zero in the first place, they're doing the zero royalty. It doesn't undercut their margins and nice to see that. We also saw a tweet from Luca saying that Pudgy Penguin toys have now done over $5 million in sales. So impressive numbers there. In terms of our projects, not a whole lot of volume over the past 24 hours. Only Chromie Squiggles did more than 10 ETH of volume. But let's look at where some of the bigger sales were. A Chromie Squiggles, this ribbed sale sold, uh, sold for 13.2 ETH. Really cool rib sale. Nice to see that. A couple Harvest sold for 5 ETH with these dark backgrounds. Well above the floor, as that dark background, background often does. A 6.9 ETH. Memories of Chilin sale. Because of this palette, it is also at a big premium to floor. And then a Dino Pals, a red Dino Pals, sold for 4 ETH. The previous sales for Red Dino Pals have been kind of in that 20 plus range, but it's a tough market right now. This is this was once a true grail, Art Blocks. I believe there were sales back in 2021 over 100 ETH, but nice to see a little bit of movement, even if it's at a much lower price. Second thing to talk about was all this news between Thread Guy and Opepin. The basic background is Bored Elon Musk, one of the largest holders of Opepins, tried to get Thread Guy to have uh, one of those Series 1 arts of Opepins. Wanted to do a trade uh, with him of one of those Series 1 in exchange for the Mutant Ape. Would have been a great deal economically for Thread Guy, but also, you know, Thread Guy just didn't want to give up his Mutant Ape. PFP had been so much a part of his identity for so long. All this different kind of bartering conversation happened between all sorts of different people trying to get Thread Guy uh, to change his PFP. In the end, Jack Butcher, the one and only, stepped in and created this NFT, which uses the colors from the mutant ape uh, that Thread Guy has and said, we're not going to give you one, but we're going to do an open edition mint. Anyone can, can mint this for $2.001 ETH and all proceeds will go to Thread Guy. So it's really Jack Butcher just stepping in and saying, let's do this mint. And it started to fly completely off the shelves, uh, had more than 27,500 minted already and counting. There's no end date in sight. Uh, you know, people made a thread guy P made a thread guy PFP, his everyday art. And then Jaleel, uh, who works with Jack Butcher stepped in and made all these derivatives of the thread guy Opepin and sold those. And these were sold for 0 0.009 ETH and over 700 of those have minted. So just kind of started to build on itself, all the energy here in the end, uh, it's already raised 34 ETH, more than $60,000. I think there are a lot of different takeaways here, starting off with Jack. I mean, Jack is just someone who has always really lent in here, just leaned into this idea that you want to spread the meme of your work, spread your art as far and wide as possible. He's much less concerned about the ideas of dilution or diluting the brand. His view is if the whole market uses your art, you just spread the awareness and they do your marketing for you. And this really plays into that. Yeah, it increases, yeah, it brings in all of 
thread guys, followers into to suddenly know what happens are people who don't watch the show. People don't follow it. Don't always know what Jack Butcher is doing. So just more awareness there. Uh, the second thing, and I thought of this in terms of thread guy is I was just impressed and how much everybody wanted his real estate. How many, how much, so many people were like, Thread Guy is the influencer of the day right now. This is the guy who is getting the attention right now. And we want him to have our PFP. And I can also say, because I did this for about a year before I got a job at Proof. You know, I built out my following and spent a ton of hours every day focused on Twitter. I'm building out a following on delivering value uh, to the people who are following me, but I never made a penny off it. You know, so for people who, for people who aren't taking sponsorships, who aren't selling to projects, who aren't kind of pushing projects that to their followers or trying to make money off their followers, it's not necessarily a lucrative business. So I think a lot of people saw that in Thread Guy. He's someone who's out there and I don't know what his business model is. But they're like, this is a guy who's out there working hard. We appreciate his content and people want to chip in and chip in they did and we're almost at 65,000. The other thing I'd say is that Jack Butcher is the kind of guy who takes the current environment as it is. You know, we've gone to basically a zero royalty environment. He takes how things are and figures out how do I build within this ecosystem? How do I build with the constraints that are put on me? And here was an example of him doing that. So you kind of just love to see it. Here was the spaces I was on, every single speaker with that NFT. So this is truly spreading awareness uh, for Opepin and doing whatever it is intended to do. Love to see that. Third thing to talk about, Punks OTC and Beanie did an over-the-counter trade just for millions of dollars of Punks. Let's have a look. You know, it was uh, Deep Value NFT, Nikolai, who kind of who talked about it here basically put out his view of the value. Nikolai is one of the guys I trust most when it comes to kind of values, uh, machine generated values uh, for different punks and other NFTs. Uh, and what was the trade? And I don't know the exact details of the trade, but I looked at the ether scan and from that I saw how much money was transferred from Beanie to Punks OTC. And I got to 1785 ETH. There could have been other sides of the deal. They both, I'm sure, have a bunch of different wallets, uh, other NFTs or value could have been exchanged. But what I saw on either scan was these 16 NFTs were transferred uh, in exchange for 1,785 ETH. Uh, so just a massive over-the-counter trade. Let's dive into the specifics and how do you get to those price if you're Punks OTC. And Punks OTC, who took the Punks, is generally very good at making money on these trades, at being patient, knowing where the buyers are, and finding value uh, from people who want quick liquidity. He already sold the zombie for 550 ETH. There are five hoodies on there. Let's say they collect you know, 130 ETH each. That's a 650 ETH total amount. Then there are 10 other punks. Let's say they go for 60 ETH. So at about a 20% premium uh, to floor. Some of them are floors. We also have a VR glasses, uh, a nice Fedora VR. Uh, 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 you have a 3D glasses, nice Fedora VR, a couple nice ones in there. Then you get to 600 uh, and punks OTC based on these prices would make money. Overall, I think it's nice when you see some of these big movements of NFTs to guys like Punks OTC who are patient, who can find the buyers and create liquidity over time. I think it's what I'd call a win-win-win. And who are the three parties? The winner, you know, Beanie the seller gets ETH right up front, which is what he wants. The you know, Punks OTC, the buyer, ideally makes money here, so he makes margin. And then the other third win is the collection. You know, when you have a a patient seller who can find buyers who aren't just going to sell them immediately. You know, the collection doesn't see the floor prices tank, doesn't see the price for any of this stuff tank and can hold up decently well. So I think this is kind of a great way to move a lot of liquidity, which I lay out right here. So overall, we'll see how it plays out. Very curious to see how these hoodies trade. We're starting to see a few more kind of hoodie sales in advance of this. So we'll see how it plays out. Fourth thing to talk about, Moonbirds Tubins. And this is just a quick one, but since I work at Proof and I think it's kind of a cool little game that's being played, wanted to talk about it. Basically, the idea here, they said in this tweet, uh, let's kick off the weekend with a Tubin's run. Play safely, only use this collection right here. And it's basically a share to mint experience. Going over the details, what does a share to mint experience mean? Powered by the Worm NFT. Basically, someone starts with the Tubin and then they send it to someone else. And that person who has it can mint their own Tubin. What is the Tubin? It's just basically uh, an NFT that's good. It's a soul bound NFT that's going to stay in your wallet, show that you were there, that you were part of the game, and that you're a part of the community in this moment. The goal here is to connect people with others build community, get people who want to get this. You have to meet someone, say, send it to my wallet that has a Moonbird. And also marks for the team, for the community who is active in this moment. So overall, interesting stuff there. Here you can see uh, the Tubin's Charms. These are the soulbound NFTs that will be in the wallet of the holders. And then lastly, let's talk about a bunch of notable sales. There were a lot of them today, so I'm just gonna dive right in. A bunch of punks uh, over the weekend sold this zombie for 550 ETH. That is the lowest zombie sale since July of 2021. More recently, we've been seeing zombies sell kind of in the 70 to 1200 ETH range. So definitely seeing some compression there. A couple hoodies, one for 225. This one in the lower left sold for 160 ETH. And not only is it a hoodie, but it's a five trade. Five trade has generally been 
a pretty grail attribute for Punk. So uh, this 160 at the low end of the range and 5T. So nice buy for whoever picked that up. And then in the lower right, just kind of a, a clean Punk, which sold for 62 ETH. Outside of the Punk ecosystem, what big sales were there? We had an Izuki, you know, with that, with that Kaigu kind of hat situation going on or clothing situation for 110 ETH. You know, I think that spirits right now are selling. Uh, I, I think they're in double digits. I think that's where a lot of the offers are, but this was really kind of a grail spirit, which I believe is why it sold for over 100 ETH. Uh, here you have a four trait Board Ape Yacht Club Cheetah VR glasses or robot glasses for 80 ETH. Super clean, selling for more than two times the floor. In the lower left, you have an ice skin D Gods, which sold for 63 ETH. It's the icing combined with the gold and the halo. I think this really makes it a grail. Ice skin tends to have a floor kind of in that 20 to 30 ETH range. So this was really about the full package. And then you love to see an Apes MF, -er, uh, which sold for 9.5 ETH. Uh, I always like it when Grail MF -er sell, sell. So highlighting that. In terms of one of ones, this is a piece called Crowns of Flowers after. Bogoro by Matt Kane selling for about 73.37.8 ETH. As we know, Matt Kane is the artist behind Gazers, really big in the generative space, but also has a lot of one on ones. This was a pretty unique piece for his style. He talked about it in the description, said it was from a long time ago, but he experienced a devastating loss, the suicide of a friend of his. Uh, and that friend was someone who introduced him uh, to the exquisite works of William. Bogoro, one of her favorite artists. A few days later, he went to the museum or to an art museum, Museum of Fine Arts in Montreal. Uh, and there he saw one of Bogoro's pieces, Crown of Flowers, uh, where the sheer weight of my grief was laid bare, is what he says. That's all in the description there. Really kind of clearly a piece that holds a lot of meaning for him. And he modeled it largely after that. Uh, so love to see that he got a nice sale out of that. And uh, clearly something that just that holds a lot of meaning. Another piece that sold 11.22 a.m. by Joe Peace. This was a secondary sale, sold for 45 ETH. Uh, the buyer was Ben.eth. You know, one of the things about being an artist in this space is you never know who's going to buy. That's just the nature of this decentralized marketplace. And Ben.eth stepped in and wanted one of, one of his pieces, 45 ETH you know, in the secondary market, nothing to complain about. His prior uh, sales, you know, Joe Peace clearly one of the absolute top artists in the space right now uh, to be selling at 45 ETH, but also has his sales at 50 ETH and then one as high as 120 ETH a couple months ago. So congrats on that sale. A piece by Terrell Owen, I'm sorry, Terrell Jones uh, sold for five ETH. This is called Bubs. This was another secondary sale. As you can see in the lower right, this piece had sold for 7.3 ETH uh, a few months ago. Um, but you know, as I've said extensively, almost everything is down. So to go from 7.3 to five ETH is really uh, nothing to scoff at in this market. Very cool piece. Uh, congrats to the buyer as well as Terrell Jones, as well as Terrell Jones on that. Here are a few of my favorite Terrell Jones sales in the past. He's had sales kind of in that 12 to 20 ETH range, but right now everybody is down a little bit from their highs. And then lastly, one of my favorite artists, one of the best kind of satire glitch artists in the space, King Xerox had this piece called Mole, which sold for four ETH. This was a primary sale. You can see all the ETH warriors kind of kicking the suit down the hole, saying he was a mole for you know, for traditional finance or who knows what, but interesting piece there from King, King Xerox and kind of just in line with his satirical work. Uh, that kind of guides a lot of what he does. That is all from me today. I hope you liked the show. If you did, give us a like, tell us what you think in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and then we'll be back tomorrow and most weekdays, most weekdays with another show. Have a great day.